Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we are going to teach the child in your life how to skate. So if you've been itching to get either your own child, niece, nephew, or maybe just a really close family friend's child out onto the ice, this video is for you. We're gonna break it up into five sections. First, we're going to talk about equipment, what you're gonna need to get your child going skating on the ice. Second, we are going to talk about what to do with your equipment and your child before you even set foot on the ice. Super important step that often gets missed. Third, we'll talk about getting your child familiar and comfortable on the ice as they take their very first steps with you. Fourth, we're gonna talk about the all important balance position and of course, we'll go over some ideas and drills and skills about what you can do to uh, dramatically increase your child's balance development on the ice. And last, we're going to talk about the stamina. It can be a real challenge keeping your child out there long enough to actually get them moving in their skates. We're gonna talk about a few tips and tricks to keep them out there as long as possible while keeping them fun and engaged. All right, so let's get started right away talking about equipment. Of course, you're going to need skates. Often I get asked, what type of skates should I get my child to start out with? Really, the answer is whatever makes them happy. Honestly, as long as there's a blade on the bottom of their feet and it's lined up well on their boot, they're good to go. They make all kinds of skates. Here's what I started learning with. It's called a double blade skate. We used to call them cheese graters. And I was only two years old when I used these. These are fantastic for backyard rinks and maybe some public skating rinks. You're gonna have to be careful though because there's a lot of rinks that actually don't allow these on their ice. I'm not quite sure why, but they do have rules about double blade skates. Um, but it was great as a two year old, I strapped those on to my already familiar and comfy boots, and I got to experience ice in a really comfortable and safe way. Um, but as I said, hockey skates, figure skates, those really cute plastic skates with different characters or colors on them, anything is fine. Your child's feet are going to grow. They're going to need so many pairs of skates as they continue to grow and develop through their life. We have a ton of links for you if you'd like to purchase anything from Amazon. Uh, they have a whole bunch of stuff out there for you to choose from. But of course, don't forget, any secondhand store would also be an excellent place to get your skates since they are gonna grow out of them so quickly. Next piece of equipment you're gonna need, a helmet. And this is one that we actually did buy from a secondhand store. Helmets are not cheap. They're very expensive. Uh, this one at a secondhand store cost $35, but what you need to make sure is it is a hockey helmet. Bike helmets, snowboard helmets, they're not gonna cut it. You need a different type of coverage when you are ice skating due to the nature of the way we fall on the ice. And the other thing that you really need to make sure of is this little sticker here is on the helmet you purchase. You want it to be CSA approved, okay? In the event that you do have a fall, you wanna have an approved helmet on your child's head. Um, face mask, I would highly recommend it, especially if your child has never been on the ice or if they're under the age of five, even six. This is going to really save them a lot. Uh, especially if they're in hockey skates. Um, there is a tendency to tip forward and I have seen children hit their chin, their nose, their teeth on the ice. This will save you a lot of trouble having that cage on the front of their helmet, okay? So those are the first two. Next, of course, you want them to be nice and warm. Now, if you are skating outside, it's gonna be super cold, you're going to want a typical snowsuit type style on your child. Now, when they're learning to skate, 
snow pants can actually hinder their ability to fall down and stand back up again. So you're gonna have to really check out your child's snow pants and make sure they're able to fall down and stand up without their snow pants slipping down and making it extra difficult for them to do that movement. So snow pants are great for warmth, sometimes hinder their ability to do the skating moves. So think on that one, test out your snow pants and see if that's something that you would like your child to wear. Gloves are a must. Um, we're going to be falling down, getting back up, lots. So you wanna make sure those hands are protected with some nice, I prefer mittens, where all the fingers are in one side of the glove and the thumb is separate from the other. But finger gloves are fine, hockey gloves are fine, anything to protect those hands. And then of course, you're going to want a chamois. At the end of your skating session with your child, it is really important to quickly give their skates a wipe. You don't wanna have any snow or ice built up or even condensation on their blade because that can cause their blade to rust. And once there's rust on the blade, it makes skating a lot more difficult. So chamois is a must. Now there's two more things I'm gonna talk about that are not mandatory to have, but they can be quite handy. And the first one is skate guards. Skate guards come in a whole bunch of colors and styles. These ones in my hands are actually made for figure skates. They won't work on hockey skates due to the rockered blade of a hockey skate. Uh, they'll just fall right off. But for figure skates, these work great. They come in a whole bunch of colors. And what they're good for is when you're doing any kind of walking off of ice surfaces. It's not good for your blades if you're walking on concrete, wood, really anything other than ice. Um, foam matting is okay and a lot of facilities will have that provided so you can safely walk with your blades on that. Um, but often debris and other things cover those mats. So these hard skate guards will actually protect your blades and your child's blades from any of that. Um, there are hard guards for hockey skates. Uh, we have them in our links as well. So they look similar. They'll have a curved front, but they will not have a curved end. Uh, it'll just be a straight, a straight shot and it'll just finish that way. And there'll be a little rubber piece that hooks onto the back of the skate. And that is actually adjustable. So what's nice about the hockey guards, they'll work for figure skates or hockey skates, and you don't need to do any um, altering of the actual plastic guard themselves, uh, unless you want to. Now these, on the other hand, they come in a standard size, which typically fits an adult skate. If your child's feet are smaller or your own feet are smaller, you're going to need to just chop off a little bit of the plastic guard itself before you assemble it. They actually come disassembled like this. There's two halves, so you can cut off just a bit of the plastic to make them fit your feet perfectly. One last thing about skates. When you purchase your skates, you want to make sure they are actually sharpened before you take them home, put them on your feet and go skating. Unsharpened skates are absolutely impossible to skate in your feet will just keep sliding all over the place. It will be a terrible experience for yourself, for your child. Just make sure that they are sharpened before you head out onto the ice. Now we are going to talk about what to do once you have your equipment, but before you head onto the ice. All right, super important step. Skates feel funny. You want to make sure that your child has a chance to get used to your, their skates. So lace them up, put them on their feet, and have them walk in a safe place in your home. Now, if you've got a carpeted area or foam interlocking matting that you can pull out and put together so they can walk on that in their bare blades, that's wonderful. Or if you've got those hard skate guards like we talked about earlier, you can always put those on the bottom of their skates and have them walk anywhere at all in your home. Hardwood floor, um, on cement patios, wherever you have some floor space that your child can walk around in. 
I'm gonna stand up right now. I've got my skates on my feet and I'm gonna show you. We don't want them walking entirely as they typically would in their sock feet or running shoes. Um, we want them actually doing more of a marching motion to avoid any face plants when they first hit the ice. So let's stand up and show you that. All right, so once you got them up, they're in their skates and you're in your home or just outside somewhere, you wanna get them walking around. And at first, let them do whatever comes naturally to them. Just get them walking around and getting comfortable with the feel of these new tools that are now on their feet. If you look close, skates come up a lot higher and have a lot more pressure put on your ankle. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's gonna feel a little bit funny for them for the first little while. Once they're comfortable, you can get them introduced to that marching we were talking about earlier. So you wanna get them knees bent, practicing bending their knees and ankles, feeling that pressure that's pushing back on the front of their ankles and get them just tapping around. I've got my mat set up here so that way my um, floors are protected, but I'm also wearing my skate guards. So I really don't need the mats at all. I can just walk around on my floors and both my blades and my floors are protected. Now, once you get them marching, and the reason why we do this marching motion is because if we get them walking around the way we typically do in our skates, we naturally roll onto those toes as we progress onto the other foot. But if we do this in skates, especially skates without toe picks, you're probably gonna have that skate continue to slide backward because there's no friction and your child can definitely fall and potentially hurt their face on the ice. We don't want that. So definitely sticking with those marches to start off. Once they're good with this, the next thing you really wanna do before you take your child onto the ice is show them how to fall down and stand up on the familiar terrain, their ground. So we're gonna get them all the way down. Might be difficult with the pressure on their ankles, but tell them to touch their knees, then their ankles, then the floor, and they can go all the way down onto their knees. You don't really need to provide any instruction here other than one important piece. A lot of the times children will be on their knees sitting on their heels, and this is not an ideal way to stand up. You wanna make sure their bottom is off their heels so they are nice and tall and ready to stand. Okay, then they'll put one foot up, one hand on their knee, one hand on the floor, and then they're gonna stand up as they typically would, likely putting pressure on their back foot and through their hand, pressing down their front foot as well. Pressure and standing up. Do that a few times. It's not as easy as it would seem. Uh, once they're comfortable with that on land, it'll be a whole lot easier taking it out to the ice. And that's where we're gonna head next. Let's go. All right, so here we are out on the ice. It's a beautiful winter day. Your child's ready to go. We gotta get them comfortable with the ice surface. So when you're assisting your child onto the ice, you wanna make sure you have them with two hands under their armpits. Okay, they're probably a lot smaller than you are, so roughly around here. And carefully, depending on your level of skating, if you're not so strong on your feet yourself, please ask someone with a little bit more experience to do this part for you, but you wanna help your child maneuver to a safe section of the ice. If you're on a backyard rink like I am at home, anywhere will do. If you are on a public ice rink, you're gonna have to make sure that there is a safe zone. Usually there'll be some sort of piloned off area where anyone who is a um, brand new skater can go to safely practice skating because a lot of the time they will be on their bottom and on their all fours. Anyway, once you're there, you're in your spot on the ice, we're actually gonna get them sitting down right away. They are not standing yet. We are gonna sit them right down on their bottoms and we are gonna have fun exploring the ice. So here's a little sequence that I like to do with the children I teach how to skate and introduce to the ice for the first time. First, we get our knees warmed up. We start shuffling our knees up and down, up and down, up and down. We wiggle our fingers, we wiggle our toes, 
And then, believe it or not, we actually become alligators. And we open our feet and close them. Open and close, open, close, so fast. Right now, we're feeling how slidey the ice is. We're gonna get our hands. After we're open, we're gonna start playing drums on the floor. Drums on the side and the other side. Get them going crazy with this drumming exercise. Close it back up. You can get them lying down on the ice, making snow angels. Get them to feel the ice and like it. Get them comfortable. When you think they're ready, it's time for that next step. It's time to get them standing up and balancing on their own. So let's go through how to do that. They're on their bottom. It's a perfect time to get them standing. So right behind me, you can see I brought out my foam interlocking tiles. If your child is super, super nervous and you think they'd be better off trying it on a little bit more stable ground first, get them right back on those tiles while they're in their skates and do this exact same thing. If you think that they're brave enough and they can handle it, get them on the ice right away. And we're gonna do something like this. We'll get them up on their knees. And remember, just like we talked about inside, we do not want their bottoms resting on their feet. That's the comfy, easy way to do our kneeling down position. We want the tallest kneeling down position we can make with our bodies. So get them as tall as they can. Get them waving around like a tree in the wind. And what that does, it gets their core muscles engaged. When they're leaning from side to side, as tall as they can on their knees, they're actually engaging those stabilizer muscles. So this is a really key step. All right, once they've gotten this far, we're actually gonna bring them right back down. We're gonna make pancakes with our body. We're gonna get flat like a pancake, right down like this, flat like a pancake, and then have a game with it, tall like a tree. Blow in the wind, flat like a pancake, tall like a tree. And you can do that as long as you would like with your child. Get them having fun. But here's what you do next. Once they're tall like a tree, you want them to show you their muscles. They're gonna need to use those muscles to stand up. And what we're going to do is pick any foot we like and we're gonna whoo, lift it right up so we can see it in front of us. And it's really important to make sure this front foot stays still. Now you, as the person teaching the child to skate, the first few times, it might be a great idea for you to carefully hold that skate steady. If you hold that skate steady, your child will have a much easier time standing up because one of the most common mistakes that's made is this foot starts sliding away or sliding too far back while your child is trying to rise up. If that is steady, they're gonna have success. So you can hold that foot steady for them, tell them to use their muscles by putting their hand on their knee, the other on the ice, and they're going to push with their hands and with their feet to come up off the ice. And then they need to carefully bring their feet together and check out these knees. Look how bent they are. We wanna keep those knees bent but we do not want them leaning forward like this. This is very uncomfortable. We want them to try and rise up. So just their knees are bent. And check it out, we are in the balance position. We've got our feet shoulder width apart. We've got our knees just a little bit bent. I've got my hands in front, just in case I fall forward, I am ready to catch myself and my back is as straight as I can make it. Balance, position. Now, once they have gotten up here, believe it or not, we actually want them to get right back down and do it all again. So falling down can actually be the most terrifying part of this whole experience for your child. Make it a game. Get them to touch their head, their shoulders, their knees, their hips, knees again, toes, they gotta touch the ice and that should help them get close enough that they'd be comfortable coming all the way back down. And you're gonna do that whole cycle again and again until your child doesn't need 
that assist here anymore. They can do it completely on their own. Now, some children actually need a little bit extra assistance when they're first starting to learn to stand up. And that's okay too, not a problem at all. One of my favorite go-tos is the magic knee because picking up your child constantly is exhausting. So check this one out. When they're down and they're trying to stand up, you can get into this position too and tell them your knee is magic. And if they put their hands on your knee, they'll be able to stand up. And I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, just because they're pushing on your knee, which is a smidge higher off the ground than their knee, they're able to stand up on their own. Sometimes it doesn't work. They'd still require you to hold on to their front skate so it doesn't slide away. But I guarantee you, if you hold that skate and they have the two hands on your knee, they'll be up in no time, okay? The third option you can do if you're not down on the ice with them, you can get something like a box or a gigantic pylon. They come in huge sizes. Really anything that is steady and elevated off the ice that they can put some pressure on to help them stand up, okay? But again, you wanna keep doing whatever phase your child is at until they are comfortable standing and falling on their own. So we've covered our balance position. Once your child is up, just like we practiced inside on the mats or with skate guards on any hard surface, you wanna get your child marching on the ice. Just very carefully lifting up one foot and then the other, tapping the ice. Tap, tap, tap. That is the first step to getting your child up and moving, okay? Once they're making their taps, you wanna try and keep them out here on the ice because this is the point where they're really going to come alive and start moving around. Now, you wanna try and keep it as fun and engaging as possible for your child because if they're just marching around in this cold ice and they're uncomfortable and they're trying to keep steady and they're nervous, they're not going to want to spend too much time out there with you. But if you can bring a few tricks with you, some toys, some neat things that are special for them when they come to the ice, you can get them on the ice much longer. I'm gonna show you a few things that I like to do with my brand new children that I teach how to skate. So I showed you earlier that big white bin. It's my huge bin of fun. And inside that bin, I've got a whole ton of these. These are awesome bingo dabbers. It really doesn't matter what brand or what colors you get. They are great for writing and drawing on the ice and they can make skating super cool and interesting for your child. And I'll show you some examples of how I use these in a bit. I also had my interlocking mats in my bin. So I just had a little selection of them and they were all folded away in there. And I've got a few toys. Now you don't need to do anything crazy. I've got things like sponges, colorful sponges, um, a collection of old stuffy animals, just little ones that I've been collecting over the years. And bath toys work awesome for on ice use. So let me show you a few little activities that we can do with the children to keep them excited and engaged and on the ice longer. Okay, so one of my favorites is the blue zoo game. I call it blue zoo because if you take a look, that's the color I made my pretend zoo. It's blue. I bring the kids over, we take a look, and I say, welcome to blue zoo. Hey, something's missing. Of course, we figure out there's no animals in the zoo. We need to go rescue them. Somebody left the gate open. So, cross the ice as close or as far away as you'd like. You can have that selection of little stuffy animals. You get the children to walk over, find the animals, and tell them they have to be very careful 
Animals are very tricky, and they can escape if we take more than one. So they can bend down, they can go all the way to all fours and practice standing up again once they pick up their animal. Or they can practice bending down and picking up an animal, uh, working on that core balance and core strength, the stability. Um, either way is great and you can even change it up depending on the day. But once they have their animal, their job is to walk all the way back and safely put them back in the zoo. And that will keep them going forever. They're gonna wanna finish making sure every single animal gets back to that zoo. Another game you can play, um, incorporating some education into your skating, is the color matching game. This one is super, super easy. All you need are anything really that has some colors on it. And then you can either use your bingo dabbers to make the same color circles, or I'm using those puzzle pieces again, the interlocking mats. They come in awesome colors. So I found items in yellow, red, blue, and green. And it's the same idea. I have them a little bit across the way so the kids will skate over, pick up. You can maybe increase the number here, maybe get them to pick up two colors. And exactly the same idea. We're coming back, but now they've got a task. It's not just dumping it anywhere. They need to figure out the matching colors and put the sponges in the correct one. Super simple, super cheap and super effective. The kids really enjoy doing that. One more I can show you, uh, another creative one. I have a selection of bath toys here. There are a whole bunch of sea creatures. You guessed it, it's the same story. The kids will come over, pick up a sea creature and save it. They'll be rescuers by bringing it back to the ocean. Summer lady, <laughs> sorry about my dog. Once it's back into the ocean, the animal has been saved and they can keep going back and forth until they have rescued all the sea creatures. Remember, uh, it's important that your child is having a great time on the ice. If you see them out there and they're saying, oh, are we done yet? Can we go home? It might be a good idea to call it a day. We do not want the kids associating negative feelings, cold, achy feet with skating. Um, once you start seeing that, call it a day and that way the next time you come, they'll be super excited to pick up where they left off. Uh, one last thing, these games are awesome, but you have to be careful. If you are on public ice, um, again, definitely ask permission before you just start whipping out your toys and putting them all over the ice. Toys on the ice can be a huge hazard. You definitely don't want your child or anyone else stepping on them. Once you step on something foreign to the ice surface, like one of these toys, uh, your balance will be gone. Friction doesn't exist and you can definitely cause, cause some injuries. So ask permission. They may give you a little space where you can take your toys out and at some locations they won't allow it at all. But of course on a backyard rink, you can do what you'd like. Anyway, that's it for this one. We'll see you next time.